I was watching Animal Planet. Do you know that the male seahorse has the baby? And I was thinking, why don't they just call that the female seahorse? <laughs> you know it's just some stubborn scientist, you know? Yeah, that one there is male seahorse. Oh, Bill, that one's having a baby. Male has the baby. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> My favorite animal is the manatee, the sea cow. Have you ever seen that animal? The manatee is endangered, and I think it's because it's out of shape. <laughs> it looks like a retired football player. <laughs> you ever seen it on the Discovery Channel? It's always floating around like, I'm bloated. <laughs> Too much pizza! <laughs> and the manatee is also called the sea cow. I mean, that kind of sounds like an insult. It's almost as if the manatee was introduced to the ocean, the other animals were like, who's your new guy? And the manatee was like, oh, hi, everyone. You can call me the manatee. You're right, sea cow. Hi, uh, name's manatee, fellas. Sea cow, fat ass. <laughs> Doesn't the manatee kind of look like a guest on the Ricky Lake show? And he'd be like, uh, Ricky, I'm here because I'm endangered. And then one of those mean people in the audience would offer up the advice. Yeah, I want to say something to the sea pig. <laughs> That's sea cow. Whatever. <laughs> sea pig, you got to get yourself an education and a job. I live in the ocean. <laughs> it just so happened you live in the ocean because you ain't got no job. I don't know what you're... You gotta get in Weight Watchers, some kind of program. I have a layer of blubber to keep my body warm in the water. Whatever, talk to my hand. At least those animals aren't alive. You know? I was feeling uncomfortable when I go in a seafood restaurant. They have that lobster tank sitting there. All the lobsters appearing out like, Hey, what are you here for? <laughs> I'm here to eat you. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, Harvey, this guy. Harvey? Oh, and Harvey was gone. <laughs> to be here in Boston. Well, I love Boston. This is a, Boston's a tough city, right? It's like, Boston! Boston! Lobster! I love the Boston energy. And you guys, all of New England, you guys love your seafood, and it's just disgusting. <laughs> I was vacationing on Cape Cod, because I'm white, and I was at this seafood restaurant, right? And this guy came over to our table. It wasn't even our waiter. He came over to the table. He was like, hey, I could not. I don't know how to do the Boston accent. You're not eating lobster. Is there a reason why you're not eating lobster? And I was like, uh, I thought I'd order what I want. I wasn't really in the mood for bug meat. Because that's what shellfish are. They're just creepy, crawly, giant insects on the bottom of the ocean. You know, fish are swimming around like, we gotta get an exterminator up in this piece. <laughs> They're bugs! They have a shell like a bug. They have spindly legs and crawl around like a bug. They have antennae like a monster. <laughs> They're probably monsters. Like, if you went home and you saw a chicken in your house, you'd be like, what the hell is a chicken doing in my house? But if you saw a lobster, you'd be like, we're moving. <laughs> because there's not a nickel's worth of difference between a lobster and a giant scorpion. <laughs> now, I understand everyone loves lobster. I love lobster. Hey, I like butter, too, okay? <laughs> How can I eat three sticks of butter? <laughs> well, I found this giant swimming sea scorpion. <laughs> it's just a spoonful of butter helps the bug meat go down. <laughs> In the most delightful way. Lobster tail. Is that the area near the butt? Mm -hmm. That's what I want, a little turf and bug butt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How about those restaurants where you have to pick out your own lobster? You're like, I guess I'll take that one that's really struggling with the rubber bands. <laughs> he seems appealing. Why don't we boil him to death? <laughs> Why am I involved in this decision? But the Northeast, it's all shellfish. Maryland with the crab. Isn't it kind of a red flag you need a hammer to eat a crab? Oh, you're having the crab? Let me get you some tools. <laughs> so you can crack open that bug shell and get that half a bite of bug meat. 
crap, it's too much work. They're like the pistachio of seafood. <laughs> and there's that nasty part of the crab you're not supposed to eat. I think it's called all of it. Because <laughs> they're crabs as in the sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> That has the same name, because it's the exact same thing! <laughs> They're just the baby version of the dinner crab. <laughs> you know God's up in heaven going, what do I got to do to stop them from eating the crabs? <laughs> I gave it a rock hard shell, I put it on the bottom of the ocean. I named a disease after it. <laughs> Jesus, you're going to have to go back down there. I don't even know how people order crabs with a straight face. Yeah, my wife and I. You know what? I'll get crabs and I'll give her some. <laughs> don't tell her I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> even the crab as a creature is creepy. It always looks like it's trying to avoid an awkward situation. <laughs> is that, oh, I owe that guy money. Crap. <laughs> I wish I liked seafood. I do. I live in, near Chinatown in New York because I'm Chinese. And uh, like most Chinatowns, a lot of the restaurants in Chinatown have live seafood tanks in the windows. And I'm always like, uh, do you want us to come in there? Or are these sea monsters protecting your establishment? Because <laughs> I are scared. I've been trying to swim a lot, you know? You always hear swimming's the best exercise, but have you seen how fat whales are? <laughs> whales, they're like swimming all the time. It's not working, whales. <laughs> Not working. <laughs> Whales always kind of sound depressed, don't they? <laughs> Rejected by eHarmony. <laughs> <laughs> my Facebook friends forgot my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I so bad at hide and seek? <laughs> the fish always find me. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we found out whales were in complete denial about how huge they are? Mm, it's mostly water weight. <laughs> a lot of water weight. <laughs> Once after a show, someone came up to me and they're like, you know, whales aren't fat, they have a layer of blubber. And I thought calling myself Big Bone was a cop-out. <laughs> blubber, that's like the opposite of muscle. It goes like muscular, tone, flabby, and then like a mile away is blubber. <laughs> Fat made a noise would be blub blur. <laughs> Damn you, plankton, you don't even taste good. Plankton, that can't be that high in calories. That's gotta be frustrating for some whales. All they eat is plankton. I only eat plankton. You know, the fish are like, and cupcakes. <laughs> Just plankton sprinkled on pizza. It's mostly water weight. <laughs> I do love whales. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. But it's not like there are people that are anti-whale anyway. You know, it's like, oh, don't bring up whales around my dad. He'll go off. <clears throat> Damn whales are all fat and lazy. <laughs> Living up the government. <laughs> Taking our jobs. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. Mm. <laughs> Whales must have poor body image. Can you imagine having a part of your body called a blowhole? <laughs> and it's on top of your head? Do <laughs> you think when whales get older, they have less control over their blowhole? <laughs> They're just in the middle of a normal conversation. What do you say? You and I grab some plankton. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I was just in the Indian Ocean and my stomach really can't handle that. <laughs> the old whale geography diarrhea joke. <laughs> Coming in handy. You always hear number one killer of whales, mankind. You know, as if there's tons of competition. <laughs> Let's take a look at the leaderboard of whale killers. Still number one, mankind. Number two, the pelican with the machine gun. <laughs> and a distant third, the lion on a jet ski. <laughs> Back to you, Bill.
I do love whales. Went whale watching. I don't know if you've ever done that. We were sitting there for a couple hours, and then I saw a whale. And I tell you, I realized I had wasted half a day. <laughs> I had paid $100 to see something I wouldn't watch on television. <laughs> we were told by the captain, or more accurately, slurred at. <laughs> by the way, when are you a captain, and when are you just a drunk guy with a boat? Because based on our captain, we should start calling homeless people boatless people. Because if they had a boat, they'd be a captain. Our captain, uh, Captain Morgan, he, uh, he told us the whale we saw was a sperm whale. You know, I don't know who came up with that name, maybe like an eight-year-old boy. I was thinking sperm whale or booger whale. Sperm whale, really? There wasn't one scientist back then to be like, well, obviously we're not really gonna call it the sperm whale. <laughs> this is gonna be in textbooks. Come on, people. <laughs> sperm whale, there was, what kind of mindset would you have to be in? Yeah, to me, it looks like a giant sperm. Yeah, to me, it looks like you shouldn't be naming animals. <laughs> and please don't open a hot dog stand. Even if I thought something looked like a sperm, I wouldn't admit it. Jam, what do you think that whale looks like? Well, it certainly doesn't look like a sperm. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> Even if I was asked to look through a microscope and identify sperm, I'd be like, oh, look at that, miniature whales. <laughs> Clams and oysters? How do we even start eating those? Hey, I find a rock with a snot in it. Think of eating it. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> What's it taste like? Pneumonia. <laughs> Oysters on the half shell, as opposed to what? In a Kleenex? <laughs> Even the way you're supposed to eat an oyster, squeeze some lemon, a little hot sauce, throw it down the back of your throat, take a shot of vodka, and try and forget you to snap <laughs> That's not how you eat something. That's how you overdose on sleeping pills. Pearls come from oysters. Yeah, I try not to eat things that also make jewelry. <laughs> oysters are an aphrodisiac. Why would we ever believe that? What do you say you and I grab some snots from a rock? <laughs> See what happens. Maybe we'll end up at my place. Maybe we'll end up at the emergency room. <laughs> Let it happen, baby. Clam chowder. How can we sell more clams? Why don't we put it in a soup that looks like vomit? <laughs> He went too far, let's kill him. <laughs> but most seafood gives me the willies, like anchovies. What exactly is the difference between an anchovy and a sweaty eyebrow? Because <laughs> whenever I see an anchovy, I think someone has attacked Tom Selleck. <laughs> Why would you put that in a salad? Squid more like the swimming sea spider, but I like calamari. You could deep fry a rubber hose, it would taste good. You know, little cocktail sauce, this is good hose. Octopus, really? Octo meaning eight, puss meaning really? <laughs> yes, the puss part's my favorite. The suction cups remind me we'd need a new bathtub mat. <laughs> Valencia, I started my tour in Valencia, and uh, I had uh, paella in Valencia. Well, I ordered it, it never showed up. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So. How long are you supposed to wait for food? In Spain. Like, do Spanish waiters think people in restaurants don't want to be bothered? It was like, it, it took two hours for the paella in Valencia. To be fair, you know, they probably had to grow the rice. And then they had to cook it on that pan the size of a manhole cover. Does the paella pan have to be that big? Here's your paella, it's bigger than your table. <laughs> I don't know. Valencia, they're very purist about their paella. They're very purist. That is not paella. That is not paella. And wherever you go to eat paella is the wrong place. I would never go there. <laughs> I would never go there. You're like, have you been there? No, I've never been there. 
<laughs> you have to eat paella at lunch too, right? Like if you eat it at dinner, that is not paella. <laughs> paella is only at lunch. This guy's impression of Valencians is way off. <laughs> there's, a, the, uh, there's some debate about the origins of paella, right? Some people think it's from Catalonia, and some people think it's from Valencia, and they're different styles, right? In Catalonia, the paella has like all the sea monsters mixed in with the rice with like a witch's, a witch's wooden handle storing it. And then in Valencia, they have like delicious things like snails and rabbit and other roadkill. <laughs> but who was the first to overcook rice? We don't know. We don't know. And sadly, we may never know. Hi, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want. If you want to see more stand-up, I have more stand-up, or if you want to see an original show like Let's Get Cooking or The Mike and Pat Show, that's available on my channel. But also, just know that I'll be posting a new video every day during this pandemic or until the world ends. Please hit subscribe and turn on your alert or notification button.